great. Well, I think we are nearly there. Um, still, there's going to be a few more people join us. Uh, it would be great if you could remain muted uh, during the meeting, uh, unless um, uh, uh, a question comes up, and then we'll we'll work it out as we go along. We've got some voting to do as we go through the evening as well. But first of all, welcome uh, from me, and uh, it's good that you're here. I think it's uh, going to be an exciting night as we look back and look forward to the, to the coming year. We are recording this, so if you um, want to come off camera, if you don't want your face to be on the film, that's fine. We'll, we'll know you're here, but um, uh, then we won't see, um, see you. But we, we prefer to see you, but if you have any reason for not being on the camera, then that's, that's absolutely fine. We record the meeting so that we've got an accurate record of the meeting. We did the same with the APCM that we did in the autumn, and, um, and that was very useful for us. Um, and, and so when it comes to writing up the minutes, we can get a good accurate uh, record of, of, of the meeting itself. So we are going to start, um, and um, I'm just reaching for my papers. It's like I've got everything in front of me. Good. So um, if you have been to a meeting like this before, you know that actually it's in two parts. There's the annual parishioners meeting at the beginning, um, and uh, then where we do some business of, of, of elections, and then we have the, uh, the annual parochial church meeting following that straight, straight after that. So we're going straight into the annual parishioners meeting, um, and we're going to uh, worship. We're not going to sing, um, but we're going to worship for a few moments because we want the whole context of our meeting to be uh, in the presence of the Lord together and in, in a prayerfulness uh, together. So I'm going to pass over to Shana and Shana's just going to lead us in a not a sung act of worship, but just a, a moment of worship together. So Shana, over to you. Thanks, David. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you. Um, is that sharing for everybody? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, like David said, we are not going to be singing worship um, this evening. Um, but really wanted us to take a few minutes just to um, to sit in a time of worship. So uh, we won't be too long. I know it's difficult to keep um, attention span when you're in Zoom. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to take us through a little bit of a journey this evening um, um, of worship with, uh, to, to God. So um, Everyone's seeing that. I don't have the nice green thing around my screen, so I'm a bit worried. So um, yeah, I uh, just want to take us through three stages, and they're probably familiar stages to you if you've been at um, St. Mary's for, for a little while. Um, and just want to start off with upward worship, uh, or, or a time of, I mean, worship is always upward, but um, just to to really praise God and um, I'm going to read from um, Psalm and it says praise the Lord praise God in his sanctuary praise him in his mighty heavens praise him for his acts of power praise him for his surpassing greatness praise him with the sounding of the trumpet and praise him with the harp and lyre Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, and just want you to, to take a moment to praise God for something that he has done, either in your life um, or just in general. Um, you can do that silently.
Yeah, Father God, we really do just want to praise you. We want to praise you for you are, you are the God of all creation. You are the sovereign one. You are holy. You are worthy. You are mighty. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so just this evening as we start this meeting, we want to take a moment to stop and to praise you and to worship you for who you are and what you've done for us. And then just um, wanted to take us into a time of inward um, introspection, if you will. Um, and just wanted to encourage you to take a moment to lay um, our sin at his feet um, and to lay any burdens that um, are weighing heavily on you at the moment. Just lay that at his feet. Father, I thank you that your word says that um, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And I thank you that, um, yeah, we can just bring these things to you, to lay them down at your feet, um, to hand them over, to surrender them to you. Father, I pray where we have sin in our lives, that you would just continue to, to work in us. Yeah, Father, we repent of those sins. We thank you for the cross. We thank you that you have saved us. And then as we um, continue, just the third, the third area that I wanted us to focus on is, is outward. Um, especially as we come together as a church, I think it's really important to um, be mindful of our community and um, the mission that God has given us. Um, and there's a song, I wish we could sing it or that I could play it for you. <laughs> Um, but unfortunately, you can't play the song over Zoom for copyright reasons. But I'll just read the words for you. And um, a little bit later, as soon as I'm done talking, I'll drop the link um, in case you would like to listen to it in your own time. But I'll read the words because they're quite powerful. It says, come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray, and unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church and we need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst. We refuse to waste our lives for you are our joy and prize. To see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church and we pray revive this earth. Unleash your kingdom's power, reaching near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts. Because you made us more, much, you made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church and we are the hope on earth. And then the chorus goes, build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere and build your kingdom here, we pray. 
And so just as we close off, um, using that sort of as a, um, a launching pad for our prayers, um, just take a moment to pray for Milton Keynes. And then perhaps you want to pray that we, as St. Mary's, would be um, God's light in the city. That he would teach us what that means. Father, we thank you that you have um, placed this church in the city. Um, we thank you that we are a part of that. And yeah, the words of those song, that song says, um, uh, I think it said, unleash your kingdom seed. And I just pray that you would ignite in us something new, um, something fresh, that we would strive and um, and work and pray and, and put all our time and energy into seeing your kingdom come, not just on earth, we do pray that, but specifically here in Milton Keynes where you've placed us. Pray that you'd empower us, um, that you would just continue to reveal to us that we are each part of one body that we each have a part to play in this. And we pray that as we continue just in our meeting, that we'd keep these three things um, sort of top of mind. Our praise and worship for who you are your sovereignty over all things, our continued need for repentance and to lay things at your feet, and the city that you've placed us in, and the, the mission that you've given us to extend your kingdom. So we pray that you would just yeah, continue with, or help us to continue with this um, attitude of prayer and contemplation and focus on you as we go about the rest of the meeting. Amen. Oh Amen. Thank you, Shana, so much. We are your church. Revive this earth. Build your kingdom here, Lord. Set our hearts on fire. Great um, start to our meeting, really. Thank you for that. Um, welcome if you've just joined us. Uh, we've just been uh, worshipping for a few moments and just praying together. And um, so we're really glad you're here if you have just joined us. Um, I'm just going to look back and then look forward uh, for a few minutes with us. And um, I'm really excited to do that because actually when I was looking back over the uh, six years uh, since we last launched um, our vision uh, five or six years ago, and when I started to look at uh, what's already happened, well, there is so much to thank God for. So um, here's a few things. So six years ago, you and I, as we prayed for the vision and as that vision came together, we wanted to have a full time community worker. And uh, I don't know whether you remember that, but we even advertised at certain points, and this is four years ago probably now since we advertised, and we really hoped that we would have a community worker. And guess what? The Lord has provided us a community worker in Marianne, 
and a team around her, which is second to none. And uh, if you've got a clap button, really, you should sort of be putting the clap button on the screen because actually um, God has heard our prayers. And, you know, we, we have that. So many people said to me, oh, we would love to have a community worker. And also we said, we'd love to have a community centre. At that time, we thought about building a new one, but that wasn't the right thing to do. But actually to designate um, a community centre, which we have done now, and to begin to work on it, which we have, and we've made some investments in it, and we want to make more investments into that uh, St Mary's Community Centre, as we call it at this moment. Um, it's wonderful to have a centre. So the Isaiah 58, 6 to 14 begins to be fulfilled as we begin to serve communities. So God heard us about community worker. God hear it, heard us about a community centre. We wanted to restore, make safe and have a beautiful, prayerful, honouring, uh, respectful churchyard. Well, we have got that. Uh, praise the Lord. It's beautiful. It's just been mown now and you can see how lovely it is. There are benches for people to sit. There are often prayer stations there. Um, our grade one listed building sits in a beautiful, safe, prayerful, respectful environment. And so um, we praise God for that. We have a deepening of our discipleship. That's something we, we longed for five, six years ago. And that's been happening and is still happening. We're on the road with that in a wonderful way. We were hoping to raise up leaders. Well, I, I've lost count of how many people we've sent into ministry in six years, but a, a lot of people have gone forward for ministry, but also a lot of leaders have been raised up through growing leaders and in all kinds of different ways because of the many volunteer teams we have we are continuously raising leaders up so God heard us in, in that uh, the other part was to create a strategic staff team and we've done that and we are doing that and praise God that as a church we did that because actually we've really needed them in this last um, 16 months my goodness um, so that strategic staff team is there and, and, and yes, there'll probably still be changes and, and, and adaptations and additions to it over time. But actually, God has really heard us, even with COVID, even with everything that's gone on. Actually, that team has uh, been able to be built. So praise God for that. To pioneer new Christian communities was something that we were hoping for. And, and, and here we have with us tonight, St. Joseph, you know, with, with Ben and, and uh, the, the whole work that's going on in, in Newton Lees with, with 70 or more and probably many more than that, probably Ben hasn't updated me on a number for a while, but actually, you know, there's a lot of people, it doesn't matter about numbers, there's a community forming there of Christ and it's absolutely wonderful. We hoped, we prayed for um, the pioneering of new communities, uh, the digging of a new well, if you remember from Genesis, uh, and God's heard our prayer and the digging out of an old well. Do you remember that from Genesis um, where actually an old well is, is brought back to life? So the water comes up again and that's St. Frideswides. And that happens so quickly and so beautifully. And now uh, St. Frideswides, if you haven't heard already, is a resourcing hub church as we are at St. Mary's. That's how well that that's going. And that wouldn't have happened unless you and I had actually uh, worked on that, sent uh, the minister, sent the people and the, and the generosity that went along with that financially. And so those two churches are now thriving in such a great way. So we praise God for that. We don't take the glory for that. We just thank God that he heard our prayer for community work, for a community centre, for um, an honouring churchyard, for uh, leaders being raised up, um, for a strategic staff team and for new Christian communities being formed. And so actually, as we look back, God has been doing tremendous things in and through the, the overall work of the church in so many ways, but in some of the specific ways that we hoped, in some of the strategic ways that we'd hoped, we can see that God has been building his church. And so we can be encouraged. And then if you look at the now, which is kind of, still in the middle of COVID, not quite out of it. And I actually have been too busy today to listen to the Prime Minister, but several people have reliably told me that it's not what I want to hear. <laughs> and it's probably not what you wanted to hear either as church. But anyway, um, we, we aren't out of the woods yet. And I'm now being told that there may be a third wave in the autumn. And actually, it's been a difficult year to navigate through, hasn't it, for everybody with our 
in our own lives, in our family lives, in the community and in, in the city and in the country. It's been incredible and it's ongoing. So we're not out of the woods yet. We had hoped the, that we would be, but we're not yet. And yet in the context of tragedy and death and difficulty with COVID-19, which has been a historic moment in all of our lives, and yet God has been doing some amazing things in this year. The community work has been blossoming because we couldn't meet physically in a building, but we can be church in our homes, we can be church in our streets, we can be church in our communities, we can be church in our city and in our country. And God has uh, he's kind of almost like forced us out. And the, so the work in the community is blossoming uh, where we are supporting families, we're supporting individuals, we're feeding individuals, we're feeding families, we are helping to connect people together, which is so incredibly important. So in the context of what's been difficult, there's been some beautiful things of God happening, uh, the online ministry has been mushrooming over uh, these last 16 months. We've gone from um, doing things really strangely to doing things very, very beautifully uh, and effectively. And the church is now in the homes of many people. It's now in your home this evening that we, we as church, we are in, in each other's homes, if you like, uh, the, the word of God the love of God, the power of God is being shared into places all over Bletchley, all over the city. And uh, if you notice on Sundays, uh, in many parts of the world, some of our mission partners tune into our services, either live or afterwards. Some of our relatives and friends, you know, from South Africa and different countries around the world, some of my family from Germany, uh, they tune in. So from an online ministry point of view, there's been a mushrooming and a fruitfulness there that I hope you feel encouraged about, where prayer has flourished and increased, where discipling has flourished and increased. We've been able to do all sorts of uh, things in the, in, in the realms of discipleship. The Word and Spirit, one great example of some great in-depth meetings which have, uh, uh, have, have created discussions within our small groups, but if you're not in a small group, within your families, uh, within your relationships, and it's been fantastic. And the outreach, of online ministry is immense. I mean, it, I find it slightly confusing, you know, how it all works, I still do. But I love the fact that actually the outreach and the reach of our online ministry is, is absolutely huge. I have conducted so many funerals and so many funerals have been streamed all across the world, not just to people who can't come in England, but because they're being streamed, families around the world have been able to come to the funerals of those who died of COVID or for other reasons during this year. And that's been amazing. It was the same with weddings. Actually, we've been able to stream weddings and we, we will, will be able to stream these things in the future. And I really thank God for that. So God's doing some great stuff now as well. And then there's the looking forward bit. Well, we as a church, we consulted for quite a long period of time on a fresh vision for SMV. And we've got a clear, vision for five years. We're here to serve and to resource God's church, our community, and the city of Milton Keynes. And it became as crystal clear as that through all the consultations and all the work that's been done, that we're here to serve and resource God's church, our community, and the city of Milton Keynes. And I hope that you're excited to do that with me and uh, with everyone else over these coming years. Church, we're aiming to resource disciples that make disciples that make disciples. We're committed to being a Bible-based and spirit-led church. We hold prayer as a key in the kingdom of God. We seek to deeply love and serve one another. These are some of the aspects of, of serving and resourcing church. Community, we believe that community is vital, it's important. We seek to love and to serve our local community. We aim to encourage a connected community. Uh, and that's part of our vision now. And then the city of Milton Keynes to serve and resource the city of MK. We commit to planting new innovative and missional churches. We commit to revitalizing churches that are in need. We aim to resource God's people right across 
the city in all sorts of different ways. And so I wonder as you hear this vision again, which um, has been uh, coming out uh, over this last year, during this last year of the pandemic, I wonder what team you'll join to serve and resource the church. I wonder what team you'll join uh, to serve and resource the community. I wonder what team you'll join to serve and resource the city. We have strategic areas of ongoing development, just like we did five, six years ago, that we have pinpointed. And we've also agreed values and principles of Christian ministry that we are following, such as audacious faith, generosity, fun, hospitality, dignity, unity, diversity, inclusivity, being intergenerational, missional, experimental, and being a courageous church. These are some of the values and principles that we hold to as a church. We have old and more recent prophetic encouragement around that we believe God has inspired us. The lifeboat church, not the cruise ship. In other words, to be one that's out there involved out in the, in the rough seas in terms of mission and, and evangelism. Lifeboat church, a listening church. In other words, a prayerful church, just like Bletchley Park was a listening station. That prophetic word is still alive for us. And we've become more prayerful. Our morning prayers, 8.30 to 8.45, Monday through to Friday, have been a beautiful rhythm of our week and of our day over these last, these last months. And we're going to continue to do that because it's just so lovely, so wonderful to pray together. And prayer is a key, a listening church a lighthouse church resourcing and revitalizing. Do you remember that picture of the, of the two lighthouses, a, a, a tall um, lighthouse, strong and well-built and still shining very brightly. And a, there was another smaller lighthouse that was uh, in disrepair. The glass was broken, the light had gone out and it really was literally on the rocks. And actually uh, then that was being repaired and made good again and shining out on the on the rough seas where it stood and that it was it was like the, the the larger lighthouse the the stronger one had helped the smaller one to recover and to then be shining again and that's still a very clear um prophetic word for us and the well digging word from genesis is still very much a relevant and fresh word for us here at the church where we're we are uh, digging old out old wells so that they can be renewed again and that's called revitalization and where we're digging for new water that's called pioneering so actually we believe God's going to call us to more pioneering and more revitalizing over the years and in fact just today I got an email from Modern Way Church saying they really want uh, what happened at St. Prizeways to happen with them they need our help they are a lighthouse in difficulty. And we want to bless them. We want to resource them with a minister. We want to resource them with some people. And we want to see them doing, fulfilling the God-given vision they've got. I tell you, I know the people down there. They are wonderful. I've been consulting with them for probably 14, 16 months. And that's coming. At the, and more than a majority of members today have voted for that. For that. And so that's something that we will do in the next six months as a church. We will, we will find a, a minister. We will find people who are called by God to go to that, that lighthouse and, and to make sure that it fulfills the vision. God has, uh, is on the move. And I don't know if you remember, but there was another prophetic picture that was early days, probably um, a year into uh, me being here about five years ago. It was of a, a picture of an elder statesman figure, what, on, on, like on the brick hills. He was sort of standing on the brick hills, looking over the city. And as he, as he watched, colour came and rose up. All kinds of colours came and rose up all over the city. As this elder statesman watched, it was as if the, the city became a beautiful and colourful place. And I believe there's still something in that that's unfulfilled, but that God is longing for in Milton Keynes, that actually it comes alive spiritually with all sorts of different colours. That It's not all the same kind of churches, but actually spiritually it comes alive. And I'm still really praying into that 
praying for that, wanting that to happen and using all, all that I am to, to enable that to happen. So, you know, like many here, I'm involved in the, the Deanery Mission and Partial Committee, the, the Deanery Synod, and in every way I can, I'm involving myself to see this city come alive spiritually. Five years ago, one of the prophetic pictures that has remained strong and that God has even been speaking again in just this last few weeks, if you remember, was the rivulets of gold, like little streams of gold, little streams of gold flowing out from the church and into the community and into the city. I wonder if you can remember that. And if you're hearing it for the first time, it's a wonderful picture of God's church being poured out in great generosity to the community in which it lives. And really that's what's happened through COVID, isn't it? Actually, we're being poured out into our community. We are serving and blessing our city in all sorts of different ways. Well, I want to tell you a, a, just a little story from the last, the last week um, where one church member who has had a, a struggle with uh, addiction uh, has helped another church member who was struggling with also with an addiction. And through that gold from one person's life experience has been shared with another person's life experience. Can you see the gold sort of flowing out through from one to another? I wonder what's in your cupboard. I wonder what gold you have that you could share with modern way if God calls you there. I wonder what gold you could share in the work of the community or with our children, our young people. I wonder what gold will flow through you and I over these coming weeks and months and years ahead. But I believe God is wanting that beautiful flow of his kingdom work of gold, if you like, to flow out through us to one another. What's in your cupboard? What could you share? Let the gold just flow. And as we begin to see beyond the, the pandemic, at some point we will, I guess, we may have to live with a lot of things for quite a long time. But now in this stage of the pandemic anyway, who is St. Mary's Bletchley? I don't think we know anymore, you see, we've changed. Some people have gone and others have joined and we don't know who we are and we'll need time to recover. And that's gonna be really important as we reconnect, as we reform church, as we come back together, there's gonna to be a, re a recovery time. There's gonna to need to be a reconnecting time. These are things to really pray for and work towards. We'll need time to get to know each other because when we've been opening up the church on Thursday afternoons, um, we've been meeting new people who've joined us through the online ministries and that's been really lovely. But as, as soon as you have a new person, there's a new dynamic, isn't there? So we need to get to know each other. So I wonder how we can do that. And I wonder what ideas you have to share into the pot for that. We have um, this new opportunity that I shared with you today, um, where we can send 15 people and a minister to help. I wonder whether that's a way that um, the direction that God's calling you. A few weeks ago, when we had our first meeting in the churchyard where we could sing, which was really wonderful, and we could reconnect with each other. And it was really good uh, time together. And I shared from Matthew 9, 35 to 38. I'm not going to go through that again, but there was just one thing that as I uh, bring my bit to an end this evening that I just wanted to bring again tonight. And that's where in Matthew 9, Jesus says, ask the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers and bring the harvest home so jesus is saying to us to ask his father to send out workers and bring the harvest home because the the, the verse before says the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few and we we know this don't we we know that the harvest god's will god's blessing on the earth god's He's pouring out his spirit continuously. That's, the, that's what the scripture says. It wasn't just for a one time at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is being poured out every day in every way, in all sorts of different ways, upon all kinds of different people. The harvest is out there, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. So, you know, I think that's some, something that we all need to commit ourselves to, to be praying that God would send out both into the work of the church here 
uh, into the community here and into the city that he would send out just the right people and the right amount of people for the work so that the harvest can be brought home. I believe there has been harvest over these last months and I believe there will be more harvest to come. So let's pray. Let's pray for a few moments. Father, we want to begin by thanking you for answered prayer for a full-time community worker and thank you for the strong team being formed around Marianne to do this vital community work. Father, we thank you for the community centre and we pray for all the resources needed to make it even more fruitful in the coming years. And we pray your blessing on the exciting uh, programme that's actually forming to create community, to deepen relationships, um, to bless our community in so many ways. Father, we thank you for renewing our church, for the, the deepening of discipleship, for the strategic staff team working so well together, for the raising up of so many leaders, for the revitalization of St. Bridesweight and the amazing pioneering work uh, with Ben and Esther down at St. Joseph's Newton Leeds. Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we pray for the vision that you have set before us. Help us to fulfill this new vision to serve and to resource your church, this community in our city. Jesus, help us to have audacious faith, generosity, fun, hospitality, dignity, unity, diversity, inclusivity. Help us to be intergenerational, to be missional, to be experimental and to be courageous. Father God, call us to see what part of the jigsaw we fit into so that we may play our part and know your blessing. Finally, we pray that you keep us as a lifeboat church, a listening, prayerful church, a lighthouse church, shining your light and a well renewing and fresh well digging church. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus name and only for your glory. Amen. So we're in a, an excited way. I'm just going to go into the important business of the, the meeting. And the minutes of the last meeting that we had that was like this, which was um, uh, on the 20th of the 10th, 2020, um, those minutes are out. And, and so I need to uh, ask for the approval of, uh, of the minutes that were sent out. And... Um, so uh, I'll ask for that approval now, if you, hopefully you, you, you've seen them, and if you, if you have and you can approve them, then could you um, uh, put a thumbs up sign on your screen uh, or, or, or put your thumb in the air or, or do something and uh, so that we can actually know that uh, I can approve these minutes and sign them off as an accurate record of, 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 the, of the meeting. Yeah, Charlie and others can see if that's all going fine. Okay. Thank you. Can I take that, Charlie? That that's that's accepted. He's nodding at me and uh, approved the minute, so I can sign. Then I'll sign a, a a copy of this and give it to Georgie, and she can uh, file it away uh, for the record. Um, is there any matters arising from those eight, those minutes um, that you want to raise in the meeting now? And I guess the best way to do that is to put it in the chat. Charlie, Christina, do you think that's probably the best way? Any matters arising from them that aren't actually on the agenda for the evening? And then I will be watching in the chat box to see if there's any matters arising. Okay. Uh, is this? Yeah, this is just the first part of the meeting. Thank you. Okay, I'm not seeing anything there, so that's fine. So I'm going to take that, take it that that's okay. And then I want to be able to move on to the election of the secretary, the secretary of, of a PCC. 
is a very important job. <laughs> and uh, Georgie does a wonderful job and she's willing to do it for another year. Isn't that great news that we're not, I, I went to a meeting in the diocese, I won't say where, but it was a diocesan meeting and uh, they couldn't find a, a secretary, they couldn't find a treasurer. Uh, uh, and so, and they, they couldn't find it during the meeting either. And so, and I went to another meeting recently and they still haven't found either. And I think that's really sad, really, really sad. Um, but actually we have got nomination for a secretary here. Uh, and uh, so I, I have got Charlotte um, who's nominating um, Georgie Holden and uh, Char Char Charlotte Cashman and Rosemary Slazer is seconding her. And this is a vote uh, that we take. So yes, I agree, hooray for Georgie, Sophie says in the, in the, <laughs> the notes. Um, so please, uh, Charlie, will you initiate that vote now and then everybody can see the result in, in a few moments. So please vote yes, no or abstain for jo Georgie being our wonderful uh, secretary. Fairly simple, you press the button and then press submit and it goes, it goes through. Hopefully you can all see that. And in a few moments, Charlie will tell me whether she's been elected. Charlotte and Andy are, and I are hoping very much she will. <laughs> yeah, I'll publish that now. I'm ending the polling. And here's the polling results, so you can see. So uh, only 4% abstained and 96% said yes. So that's really wonderful. So, um, Georgie, can we say thank you? Because it's not easy, especially to put this meeting together. I, and Pam and I used to spend a long time, do you remember Pam? Um, <laughs> and and um, uh, other PCC secretaries along the way. Uh, and this isn't the easiest meeting to bring together. So Georgie, you are a star. We are all very grateful, aren't we, Church, uh, for what you do. Um, and um, <clears throat> so, yes, give her a round of applause. <laughs> For that so welcome back georgie we need you uh we love you <laughs> and we look forward to working with you as we go along so that's the election of the secretary of the pcc and then there's the election of the wardens in this part of the meeting and they have been nominated as andy prince um and andy's just going to wave at you furiously because then you can see who andy is just in case you're a new person um, sorry, we can't see Georgie tonight, so that's why I didn't ask her to wave. She's not on the screen tonight, but she is listening and she's here. Uh, but Andy, you can. He's going to wave one more time so you can sort of find him on the screen. He's with his lovely wife, Paula, there. And that's Andy Prince, and he's been nominated um, by uh, Steve Walker and, and seconded by Ian Anderson. And um, Charlotte, um, who's now going to wave furiously on the screen as well, there she is. Um, and she's been nominated by Gladys Deleuze and uh, seconded by Alison Hammett. These are the wardens that have been uh, suggested for the year. And uh, it is your responsibility as church members to, to say, yes, they're good, uh, uh, godly people in our community who, who can take on this responsibility. So, Charlie, would you initiate that for me now, please? Even in COVID days, there was always the chance that somebody else could be nominated as well, which means it could there could have been three names there. But as there were only two, and we need to, uh, that's why they were on the same screen. But we're really, really grateful. They're both willing to stand, having been wardens through the most strange, the strangest year of being a church warden, I think, ever. Um, and they've been, they've done, believe me, they've done an amazing job uh, at helping us and guiding us through. And they continue to do that because you can imagine that I'm in a slight dilemma as to what to do really over these coming weeks ahead. Now the government have, have changed things. So I consult with them all the time. And with the PCC, we've been talking about the reconnection and, and what we do after we go back and obviously with the staff team as well. So Charlie, tell us what the results of that are. 
so 98% and, and just 2% abstain. So thank you ever so much for voting. You can see that's very, very clear. And uh, um, so um, thank you, Charlotte um, and Andy. Uh, you are both uh, um, elected for the coming year. Uh, you will be officially installed by the Archdeacon at some point. And I, I intend to go to that meeting at Christ the Cornerstone, which I think is in the early autumn, when hands are laid and prayers are prayed for you because it's actually a legal role, it's an official role, and it's an important role in our church. So we are very grateful. One more big clap for them, just to, either on the screen or, but really thank God for our, our church wardens. Uh, we really need them. So thank you so much, uh, both of you, for that. So we go uh, into the second part of our, our meeting, um, and um, we just record any apologies of people who can't be here tonight. Actually, there are quite a lot because um, it just so happens that people can go on holiday and so have chosen to go on holiday. Some of you I know are actually that you've tuned in while you're on holiday. So that, well done if you've done that, but others haven't been able to do that. So, um, Georgie, just do you want to share with us uh, any apologies? Yeah, the ones that I've had are John Penny, I presume Sheila, Sheila as well, uh, Chris and Oliver Hermes, Rebecca Slingsby, I think is, um, I know Tim's, I think Tim's here, but I think Rebecca isn't, Anita Harrison, Hannah Akiba Betts and Grant Smith. Thank you. Are there any other apologies that people want to put? If there are, can you put them in the chat box, please? And we'll record them. Um, because if there is if there is apologies, we don't want to miss them. Um, just to honour those people that to actually. Um, uh, I'm just I'm just checking uh, what Stephen's saying in the in the questions as well. I, I have, Stephen, I have, yes, I've got the apologies um, of the. Uh, hopefully, I haven't missed anything. Of uh, Georgie, are the apologies the same for the first part of the meeting as the second? Yeah, absolutely. They are. Okay, Stephen, is that okay? So that's, that's, those apologies have come now. The electoral roll. Ah, oh, sorry, no, the minutes of the meeting held on 20, 20th of October. So there's two parts of the meeting. Um, so now we're looking at the second part of the, the um, minutes of that last meeting on the 20th of the 10th, 2020. Um, if there are any uh, corrections, this is the longer part of the meeting now, if there are any corrections, could you quickly put them into, if you've got them already noted, you've probably got them ready for this meeting if you if you saw one, could you type that into the, the, the chat box for uh, Georgie to amend? I'm really happy to amend the minutes if they're wrong. And then we need to approve the minutes and then see if there's any matters arising. So. Any amendments? I'm just looking at my chat box just to make sure uh, if any come in. No, so that's okay. And then um, uh, can we approve the minutes of that meeting, that second part of the, of the meeting? Can you, could you put your thumb up in the air or put a thumb up on the screen for me if you're happy to um, accept those minutes? Great, lots of electronic. <laughs> I'll put my thumb up in the air. Um, Charlie, can you just look out for me on that, please? Any, anybody not happy with, so put your thumbs down and away or off the screen. Um, is anybody not happy with the minutes as they stand? Okay, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm trying to look at as many screens as I possibly can here. Um, 63 screens it's quite interesting <laughs> so charlie christina help me out if i if i uh, don't spot something is that all right um okay so any matters arising from those minutes um that we are not going to cover in this meeting any matters arising put it into the text box into the chat box i'm just looking give that for a moment for you just in case there's a matter arising No, okay, that, that means I think we can move on, which is great, to the electoral roll. Before I pass that to Georgie, with the electoral roll, 
members uh, have joined us. Uh, there are several members who have joined us uh, who uh, haven't been here long enough. Um, don't, some don't even know what an election roll is. So actually in this pandemic year, without being able to sort of meet with people, we have found it extremely hard to get people to sign up on the electoral roll. That, I've been talking to other vicars, that's the same story right across the city and across the, uh, the diocese. So the number will go down because actually we've not been able to collect people as they've come to worship in the same way as we have in the past. So um, with that in mind, Georgie, just uh, give us an update on the electoral roll and then we need to approve it. Yeah, well, we have did our best. Um, I took it to the pick, one of the worship picnics. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've made adjustments where we can, where we know that people have definitely gone somewhere else. So currently it stands at 292 electors on the roll, of whom 142 are living in the parish. Yeah, yeah. Um, remind me, I don't think we vote on this, Charlie, do we? No, we, it's an acceptance, isn't it, of, of the electoral, yeah. yeah. So, um, are we happy to accept the electoral roll as it stands? Can you um, put a thumb up in the air or a thumb up on the screen so that they so that we can administrate that? It's quite important that we we have gone through it very carefully. Charlotte and I spent quite a long time going through it, didn't we, Charlotte? About um, in terms of working out who, who um, is no longer with us. Sadly, we've lost some people, um, not uh, through through COVID, sadly. And also some people have moved physically away from the city and others have moved on, but others have moved in. And so we will have a, uh, an increase in the electoral in the coming year. OK, I'm going to take it. That's accepted unless anybody tells me uh, differently. OK, great. Thank you, Georgie. Um, so the annual reports and any questions. Um, the, a huge number of work was done on the reports. They've been out for a, a, a little while now. Hopefully you have uh, been able to read them. Uh, we do like to give you an opportunity to ask any questions about the reports if there are things you'd like to ask. So this is your opportunity now. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll pass over to you now, but you'll need to put it into the chat system for us to be able to see what your question is. And then, uh, and then if it's a question for a specific report, I'll ask the, the writer of that report to, to answer your, your question. So I'll just give a few moments, just in case there are questions. They, they make very encouraging reading of, of what God's been doing actually in this last, well, it's not even a year since our last APCM actually, but a huge amount of work has gone on by the staff. Um, just reading what's coming up. Okay, lovely. So, uh, so Charlotte, I wonder if you could answer this question it would be useful to know who is leading the new governance group. So the, the, the governance renewal that we're doing, um, uh, who, who is leading the new, the, the new governance groups? Um, Max, your surname has escaped me all of a sudden. Somebody help me out. Max Johnston. Max Johnston. Thanks, Thank Max. You, Max. Sorry. <laughs> Senior moment. Yeah, Max Johnston is very helpfully guiding us through a process of looking at who is responsible, accountable, should be consulted and should be informed. So we're looking in great detail at each of the new committees, which are under specific headings. Do you want me to tell you what the headings are? Yeah, I think that'd be useful. It's not all agreed, as long as everybody realises we're still in the process of creating this new governance structure, which is really helpful. We've been at it for, for a while now. I am, while, just, while Charlotte gets the papers, I am grateful to everybody that's been contributing to this. Okay, so um, as David says, this hasn't yet been um, finalized, but this is the direction we feel we're being called in. Um, there will be an organization and management committee, which will cover things like people services, buildings, finance, regulation and compliance, 
information technology. There will be a mission and outreach committee, which will cover things like um, the project management group, which um, looks, uh, oversees the strategic, strategic development fund um, initiatives, mission partnership group and evangelistic outreach. And there will be a ministries committee, which is going to really make sure that the St. Mary's home church is in good shape and looked after. And that will cover such things as worship, church services, home groups, parents, babies, toddlers, children, youth, intergenerational aspects, and oasis. So that's the sort of structure that we're heading for. And as I say, Max is helping us to put together a plan so that we can actually make sure there aren't too many gray areas in our governance because we felt things just needed to be tightened up a bit more so that we could truly be um, good stewards of our resources and accountable to you all. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, who else is on that group that's working on that? So it's oh. Max, I mean, I know I, uh, the Claire you're inputting, I'm inputting, but yeah. who else is on your little, little subgroup? Max, Peter, Landry, Steve Walker, Sophie Fletcher, Judy Cumberland, Georgie Holden and myself. Have I missed anybody? No, I think that's right. That's right. So that hopefully, Andrew, that that um, that answers your question. And and when we have our new governance structure, I mean, it's very it's been actually a very exciting journey of uh, this and a very detailed piece of work. So very grateful to everybody. Um, but yes, um, that that's hopefully answered your question. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, I've just got a note here from another person say, uh, from Christina talking about Rachel uh, Ciampoli, Ciampoli and Rachel Ciampoli, Ciampoli. Is, going, Ciampoli is going to be our new curate. Um, she will arrive in, um, she'll, she will be ordained in early July, but she won't arrive in St. Mary's uh, to live in the parish until early August. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we, we do have a new, a new curate. Um, um, so, uh, I think that's an amendment that Peter, that Peter's saying, Reverend Peter Landry, uh, is that an amendment, Peter, you're asking for? The Reverend Peter Landry. The Reverend Peter Landry. Okay. Not the right Reverend. It's okay. Um, good. Uh, <laughs> um, so Sophie, for information as PCC, we are yet to approve the new structure and, and chairs, but all progressing well. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. That's really helpful. Um, and are there any other questions for the um, for the reports that have been written? Otherwise, I'll take it that that that's okay. Um, big thank you to everybody who's written the reports. Um, everybody uh, raise your hands in the air and give them a huge clap because not just for the report writing but the immense amount of ministry that's been going on over this last uh, year it's been fantastic and all of those reports represent and you can see then you know what the work of the church here is and it's immense it really is fantastic so thank you um, we're going on to elections of the PCC that's the parochial church council they are the governance team for the church. So alongside with wardens, there is also a legal body um, that, is, that uh, is elected who, who then also share the responsibility uh, of the governance of the church. So I'm gonna pass over to Georgie for that and then Charlie will create the vote system for that. So we have basic, almost everybody that was uh, elected in October is standing again. So I'll read the names and, and who they're proposed by and so on. Um, I think we're going to vote in one block. So uh, we have Judy Cumberland proposed by Mary Nichols and seconded by Chris Nichols. Chris Day proposed by Oliver Hermes and seconded by me. Sophie Fletcher proposed by Stephen Fletcher and seconded by Oliver Hermes. Alison Hammett, proposed by Charlotte Cashman and seconded by me. Max Johnston, proposed by Don Cameron, seconded by Penny Powers. Claire Reeves, proposed by Rosemary Slazer, 
seconded by Alison Hammett. Anne Rolfe, proposed by Nikki Whitmore, seconded by Pam Lambert. And Rosemary Slazer, proposed by Claire Reeves and seconded by me. So. So if you could vote, please, that would be great. So we've got the people that we need uh, for the uh, PCC. And if you could say yes, no, or abstain for that, and then submit that to the poll, that would be really, really helpful. Thank you. Just while you're doing that, quite there are a, a good number of uh, new members of the PCC since last October, which has been fantastic. The, the team is really strong. We're, I, I think we're really working well together and I'm glad everybody's able to and willing to stand again because actually to have the momentum and, and, and that continuation of people is, is really helpful. If the team changes constantly, it's quite hard because it interrupts the flow of the work. So really grateful to everybody who's willing to stand again. And just in the notes, you, in the chat, you can see that um, Charlotte's comment there about Alison Howitt is an ex officio member of PCC as she's been elected to Dean Wissinger. So just notice that. Do ex yes, they do, Sophie, yes. Um, because you're also a member of the church, so yeah, you do vote. Um, the host is sharing the polling results. results. Um, uh, sorry if I didn't make it clear that Sophie earlier because it's now completed, but it's 94% um, saying yes, nobody's saying no, and does six uh, abstain, six percent abstain. Um, and my experience of of this is on Zoom is that some people aren't able to access the the polls. There are just a, a small amount of people that that sometimes cannot do that. So sorry if you can't see that, but that's a huge majority. So thank you ever so much. Uh, we welcome you back to PCC um, and as a church, can I ask that as a church, we pray for our PCC because it's an incredibly responsible job. Um, we, we follow um, the charity guidelines carefully uh, and therefore that's why you'll notice, you know, there, are, there aren't paid members of staff on PCC. We sorted all that out. It, we're, we're very careful about how we, how we do that, but at the same time, we do get advice from members of, of, of the staff team who are paid because we really need their expertise and information and knowledge. So sometimes they're brought into meetings like Charlie is often because of his operations role, which is, is, is wide. And um, we do bring in others as guests into the meetings so that we've got the right information that we need. So that was the elections of, of the PCC. Um, Charlotte, I'm going to hand over to you, if that's OK, for the um, the, the election of um, deputy wardens and the, and the welcome team for the coming year. Thanks. That, that's fine. Are we just taking as read the um, nomination to Synod or did you just want to do that one? Shall I just clarify that we don't need at this time to nominate anyone to Synod. However, in July, Chris Hayter's term, I I didn't put that on the agenda, but in July, Chris Hayter's term in both deanery and diocesan synod ends. And so at that point, we may wish to re-elect elect somebody for deanery synod if there is somebody. So I think at this point, we won't, Charlotte, we'll just leave things as they are. But as a PCC, we'll address that uh, when there's a gap, because actually I'd quite like for us as a, P as a, a church to have full representation on, on deanery synod because actually there's some very important matters that are going to be discussed nationally um, it, it, over, the coming, over the coming year. That, that's fine. I was just um, seeing it was on the agenda. So yep. thank you, Georgie. Great. Um, right, deputy wardens. Um, we actually have five deputy wardens who have agreed to stand. Um, Chris Shrimpton has decided to step down for the time being, so he won't be re-elected this time. So we have Seb Deleuze, Alison Hammett, Peter Johansson, Mary Nichols, and Tim Slingsby. Now, Mary and Tim were actually elected last October and they had a wonderful induction meeting and then have done nothing since, bless them. Well, when I say nothing, nothing to do with their deputy warden role. 
So they're very busy doing other things. Um, so bless them for agreeing to stand again and for these five deputy wardens who are absolutely key to the wardens. We are enormously grateful for all they do and they stop Andy and I going even greyer than we are. So um, those five, I think we're going to approve. Is that right? Has Charlie got a poll? Here it is. So if you can uh, just fill that poll in now, that would be really helpful and then submit it. It's working well, Charlie. Thank you for what you're doing in the background. Christina, thank you. Appreciate what you're doing there. So we're really hoping that um, we know the poll includes Chris Shrimpton. That was an error. Sorry. And he's also on the agenda. But I had spoken to him before and it was... Um, yeah. It was made clear. Okay. I think we're all voted. So, um, yeah, so that's all, all passed. Thank you everybody for voting. That's really helpful. Thank you. And then the other one, I just want to mention the names of really, um, our wonderful welcoming team. They've also perhaps not had a lot to do in terms of church in the recent 12 months. Um, but nonetheless, as we've heard, there are new people, new people coming online, new people coming in person, new people who will have joined our church. And we're going to need to do a lot of reconnecting. So these welcomers will be very key to the reconnection and the warm welcome that we'll provide in the coming months. So this team is led by Jill Collins. Jill, can you give us a wave, please? Yeah. And Linda Castle. Thanks, Linda. Should really have got the deputy wardens to wave, shouldn't I? Anyway, carrying on with the, the welcomers. Um, on their team, they have Irene Aldred, Sally Anderson, Sheila Carter, Bob Cosford, Corinne Cosford, Alison Hammett, Lynn Payne, Paula Prince, Brika Scott, Rosemary Slazer, and Maureen Tinson. Now, we don't normally vote on them, but we just thank them enormously for being prepared to take on this role. And I'm sure Jill and Linda, if others felt called to this ministry, you would welcome them with open arms. <laughs> They're nodding. I'm sure they would. <laughs> so, do we, should we just identify um, the deputy wardens, um, yes. just in case there's anybody new? So, Seb, are you here? Which screen is Seb on? I think I saw him somewhere. Anyway, I can't see him, but if he's waving, that's great. Um, Alison Hammett, give us the wave. She's waving, sitting next to John. Um, Peter Johansson, yeah, always oh, got a lovely, either a sunrise or a sunset, I'm not sure which, <laughs> probably in Finland. <laughs> yeah. um, Mary Nichols, Mary and Chris together, yeah, thank you Mary. Mary also is heading up the new Connection Cafe um, at the Community Centre, so thank you Mary for what you're doing there. Um, and Tim Slingsby, so I think Tim may be on but without a camera oh no he's there there he is hello Tim thank you lovely we do appreciate you many many thanks thank you Charlotte so um moving on to we're getting we're getting through this meeting we're not far off the end we've got um uh three one two three four sections more to the to the meeting um so it's back to me to, for a time of thanks. Can you imagine how many people there is to thank in St Mary's Bletchley? There are so many people. And I, Kim knows how concerned I am that, you know, I'm bound to miss somebody. But uh, so, so Kim and I would talk about this and we, we thought, well, first of all, we want to thank everybody that's <laughs> been volunteering or been helping out over this crazy COVID year. We really appreciate everybody in, in, in this church. We really do. It's, it's been an amazing effort. Um, 
I would like to thank the many volunteer teams that make up uh, St Mary's Bletchley doing pastoral, practical and administrative ministry. Under those three headings comes an enormous amount of, of names. I, there's no way I could list all the names, but really thank you for all the work you've been doing pastorally, practically, administratively, uh, often in the background, often unseen. Thank you so much. I want to thank the staff team, the voluntary staff and the paid staff who've done a sterling job through uh, this last year. I want to thank the church wardens, Andy and Charlotte, who have simply been amazing. I want to thank the curates, Paul and Hannah and Peter, who have minister ministered through some very difficult days. So many funerals and so much different type of ministry that they've had to attempt that, you know, would never have usually been done in a curacy, but actually they, they've done it wonderfully. So I really thank God for, for, for the curates here. And um, I want to thank the PCC, who've been working incredibly hard on all kinds of fronts, including the new governance structure, which will soon come to a completion. I would like to thank some specific people who've gone over and above what's been asked of them. And I know it's always dangerous, isn't it, to single a few out, but I just feel it's really important to actually single a few out. Bob Cosford. Bob has, has you know, uh, he's been the champion for the churchyard renewal. And um, I think he has to be one of the most patient men on earth. Because if you deal with the, the Diocese and Architectural, Architectural Council, in other words, the Planning Commission of the Church of England, and you're dealing with the M uh, Milton Keynes Council and the Bletchley Council and other people who want to just put their penny worth in, in terms of you know, different societies, it's incredibly difficult to do anything in a historic churchyard. And he has done it so well and so lovingly and graciously that I, I want that to be minuted in the, in the notes of this meeting. And uh, we, we have got ways that we're going to uh, uh, bless uh, Bob and, and thank Corin for supporting him. But I want to verbally just um, thank him in this, in this meeting. I want to specifically thank Chris Day, uh, though he won't want me to, but I do want to because in voluntarily sharing the finance, um, uh, finance work of this church, he has just put in so many hours and hours and hours of work, you know. Um, if it's St Mary's in the Marsh with 10 people and not very much finance, that's one thing. If it's St Mary's Bletchley with the kind of budget that we're dealing with day by day, week by week, month by month and year by year, that, that's a different, a different thing. So with, with his finance team, you know, with Anne and, and Nikki, really, um, they've done amazing things. And to get the accounts ready for this meeting and ready, uh, it's all legally agreed and everything. It's, it's an amazing thing. So Chris Day, I want to specifically single you out and say thank you so much. And I, I know I'm speaking, all of these thank yous are not just from me, they're from everybody that's on this screen and everybody that can't make this meeting, who's a member of SMB. I want to thank Diane Young because um, during this year, uh, uh, and I can actually feel the emotion rising up in me as I start to talk about it, because it's been pastorally one of the most difficult years ever in the ministry that I've, I've experienced for 35 years. So to have somebody like Diane, um, <clears throat> who has headed, has continued to head up the pastoral ministry with her team, thank God for every member of your team, Diane, but we do thank you, Diane, for your work uh, over the year and over the years. Um, because um, it's been extraordinary and people have been kept connected, loved, supported. They've rung you at weird times <laughs> and, uh, and it's not the easiest job in the world you've got there. But, um, you know, I really bless, I really thank God for you and I bless you. I really do. Um, I want to single out Mary Ann and, and thank her for, and her community action team for rising up. The vision was there for community work in St. Mary's. Uh, the vision for a community work worker was there and for a community centre was there. But in the end of the day, you need people on the ground. And uh, Marianne, who hasn't been that well herself with COVID herself and different things she's had to contend with. Bless you, Marianne. You've done incredible work over this last year. And I have loved working um, 
with you and alongside you. And I love the fact that you've built a team around you so that you're not doing it on your own and you are sharing the work. I think it's it's fantastic. And we fully support you. And we want you to know that. We want you to know how grateful we are. I, I want to say a thank you to the audio and visual team because this is something that not many of you will know really, but you know, the audio and visual team have had to keep going through all this pandemic because actually they've helped me with funerals. They've helped me with weddings. They've helped me with live streaming stuff, you know, um, helping uh, Christina brilliantly uh, before Shana arrived and, and they just did were fantastic. And now they're working with Shana and doing, continuing to do amazing work. And uh, I'm not going to name one of them because there's a whole team of audio and visual team members, but do you know what? They have been tr tremendous. And I know the funeral families that have had their um, funerals streamed from our church voluntarily, all done by volunteers. If you go to the crematorium, it's all done by professionals and you pay for it. And it, that's very, a very different thing. But we as a church have served our community in a very specific way there, especially for the funerals. And I want to have that noted um, in this meeting. And I want us to really thank those people because um, it, it's not the easiest job. I, 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 for myself, you know, I have no understanding of some of what they do because it's so complex, but I do appreciate it and thank God for you. So that's specific. The online ministry into so many homes because of you and the team and now Shana doing an amazing job. Um, actually, we are reaching so many homes that we would never have reached before. Praise God. If we hadn't got a team like that, we wouldn't have been able to do it. So many churches have not been able to do this outreach because they haven't got the team. I'm nearly at the end of my thank you list, but I want to specifically say to Ben and Esther Thorpe how grateful we are and how thrilled we are about your ministry and the growing ministry there and the way that you are so persistent and so prayerful about the ministry down at St. Joseph's Newton Lees. It's such a beautiful pioneering work you're doing and uh, often isn't seen by the majority of SMB, but is seen by your community and the church which is forming around you. Um, but I love the way that um, that God has, has taken you in a kind of almost monastic um, journey of, of prayer uh, in this last year and to see to see a pioneering church flourish in the context of a pandemic is extraordinary you know it could just quite perhaps it could have just dis disappeared if it hadn't got the foundations or the leadership that you 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 both bring to it but I want to really thank you and I know our church would really want to thank you for the leadership that you you, you brought to St Joseph's over this last year and the final thank you uh, and I've never done this before but I'm going to do it this year the final thank you, and she'll be really cross with me for doing this, is to say thank you to my wife because she has supported, Kim has supported me. This year has been really crazy and uh, just navigating the church through this time has been mad. And, and I can tell you now, all of you, the wisdom often comes from the better side. <laughs> and, and, and we've really teamed it and we, we always have teamed it together ministry. But, you know, this last year has been incredible. And uh, I, I thank God for Kim every day. And even today, there's been moments today where I've really, you know, needed Kim, listened to Kim, heard Kim, and actually, you know, um, decisions are made better when you, you make it with a team and not on your own. And actually, we're a good team. And I thank God for, for Kim. It's not been the easiest year for Kim um, being married to a church leader. Um, church leaders across the land, you know, are finding life a bit difficult now, um, but I, I think I'm doing okay because of the support structure I've got around me of wardens and my wife and the support network that I've got, the spiritual mentors that I have. And so, yeah, thank you, Kim. That's the end of the thank yous for this year. And if you want to thank somebody else, you can put it in the, the notes. Just if you think of somebody that I really should have thanked, <laughs> Help me, cover me on it. <laughs> um, but I am grateful to all of those people and to all of you as church for being um, people who really want to be every member ministry and not just leave it to a few. So we're now on eight. We uh, did have one question that was submitted 
Um, it was dealt with. It was dealt with specifically. It was on on a report. Uh, that, that person was contacted. The the, the answer was, was was given, and it was answered directly and totally satisfactorily. So that was a a, a question submitted to a specific. Uh, report and that's been dealt with. There are no other questions within the 48 hour period that have been submitted to the meeting. So we're, we're, we, we have no other questions at this point. There is no any other business that's been tagged onto this meeting. So um, as, as far as I'm aware, now I'm looking at the screen, at my key people to tell me if there's another any other business that hasn't actually been, that I don't know about. And Andy, Charlotte, no, Georgie? Nothing came in. Uh, questions. The um, John Penny's question. Yeah, that was that was dealt. That's what I mean. That was dealt with directly uh, with with John Penny and and um, Chris Day, and and that was happily sorted and, and resolved. It was a it was uh, a factual question. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm just looking at the notes now. Well done, people are thanking different people. That's great. Do look at the, the notes. Absolutely. There is always a fabulous one about that. <laughs> oh, it's worth reading these notes just because it's, it's lovely and fun. Um, so I think we are coming to the end of the meeting. So thank you for everybody uh, for coming to this meeting. Thank you for uh, the staff team in the background that have been helping me. Uh, I really appreciate that. Charlie, um, thank you because Lisa has just come out of hospital today. So please pray for Lisa as she recovers from a knee operation. Christina, as ever, is, was, has been here just, to, she'll be here anyway, because she always is, which is brilliant. But actually she was here just in case uh, to pick up the last second from Charlie if he needed to get to Lisa. For any reason so really great for you two uh, for, for backing me up and making sure this meeting has run smoothly we're going to close the meeting in prayer and peter landry is going to do that um, and so i'm going to hand over to peter to do that charlie has he got permission to begin yeah i'll just unmute myself <laughs> great let's all pray together Just before I close off in prayer, I would love to just create some space for each of us just to say a prayer of thanks for this past year. Um, we've thanked everybody who's been involved, but let's spend some time worshiping and praising God for being faithful and that he's been present, that he's been a comforter and that he's sustained us during a really, really difficult time. So let, let's spend a minute praying by ourselves. Father, we want to thank you that you are a God who has been faithful, that in a really dark and difficult time that you've been with us the entire way, and that your Holy Spirit has led us and sustained us, and that as a church, even though we've been separated, we've been united online, we've been united in spirit. Now, I just pray, Father God, that as we navigate things going forward, that your Holy Spirit will take the lead that you empower us, Father God, to pick up those pieces um, that we weren't able to do during lockdown, that you will help all the different teams carry on and that you will empower them, that you will refresh them and that, yeah, you'll just continue the good work that you've started. Please, Lord, be with the leadership, be with the PCC, be with that governing body that's deciding the racy for um, the, the church. Please be with our wardens, be with all the staff members and be with each and every single one of us as members of this church, that your Holy Spirit will help us grow upward, inward and outward. 
that you empower us to be the church that you have called us to be, that each and every single one of us who are struggling with our faith draw alongside with us, each and every single one of us who are struggling um, and feeling really, really tired, help us find that rest that we find in you. And I just pray, Father God, that you will help us be a family and at the core of everything that we do in this year to come. It will be focused around loving each other and loving you. Bless Marianne, bless every single member of our family as we reach upward, inward and outward and empower us to be the people that you've called us to be. Pray this in your name. Amen. Peter, thank you for praying for us so beautifully. Um, when there's news about um, services on the 27th, we will share with you by email and on the Facebook. We will, we, we, we've got some big decisions to make over these next few days as I work out what the government is saying. Uh, but, I, but I am guessing that we won't be able to have sung worship yet if for another month in, church, in the church building. I guess the details of that will be out tomorrow. But so um, I will let you know as soon as a, a decision has been made about uh, public worship in the building. And I'll also let you know about um, Paul and Hannah because both of them are finishing their curacies uh, now. They've both been, they've both successfully finished their curacies and have got the letters from the bishop to say that, which is really wonderful. Um, and, uh, and so now we're working out um, what, what Hannah's next chapter of ministry will be. So pray for Hannah as she decides that. Pray for uh, Paul and Haley uh, as, they, uh, as they continue on their journey of that. There's, new, there's news that will come out in the next few weeks about Paul and Haley, but uh, not quite yet. So um, pray for that. And we will let you know um, when the news comes out on, on, for Paul and for Hannah and about the church services, just to reassure you about that. Thank you for joining us. Have a good rest of the evening. God bless. Bye for now. Bye.